All right, we have more changes unfolding in presidential politics. Changes that have the Kamala Harris team in meltdown mode. Just hours before tonight's debate, after multiple new polls just released, released yesterday, confirmed four states, four must-win states for the VP, are now not only in play, but firmly within Trump's grasp. And this is all just dropping a day before tonight's debate. In fact, if the election were held right now, if it were held today, Trump would be looking at a possible landslide electoral college victory, a major victory. And what has the Harris team so flustered is that these are not Trump-friendly polling outlets, folks. You're going to see what I mean in a minute. All while Kamala's acolytes in the media begin breaking down on camera. Wait till you see this. But before we get started, thank you for liking and sharing these videos. It really helps out the channel. And consider subscribing so you don't miss these regular updates. So after weeks of corporate media's nonstop fawning over Kamala Harris, artificially propping her up, the tide has finally turned. The honeymoon period has ended and her numbers are taking a hit. So much so, in fact, that Kamala World is beginning to melt down over her scheduled debate performance tonight. Some top advisors even telling reporters that they don't want her participating tonight. They've been brainstorming ways to get her out of it, worrying that if things don't go her way, if things go poorly in the debate tonight, it could mark the end of her path to 270, saying they're going to be holding their breath tonight. Because, look, what's happening right now is the push that we've been witnessing for the last month, ever since Biden was usurped from his position as party nominee, this monumental push or corralling by the Democratic machine to prop her up is falling apart. Watch. I'm picking up quite a lot of nervousness, by the way, on the state of the race. I don't know what you're hearing, Anthony, but I'm getting Democrats kind of texting me. I had a long call yesterday with a strategist, and I can fill you in on that a bit more. But I'm hearing quite a lot of uh, nervousness from some Democrats. She's never been in a presidential debate before. She's been in a vice presidential debate, but never a presidential debate. Um, so... I do think she is going to probably be a little bit more nervous. Uh, I think she has more riding on it. Apparently what had happened was their internal polling has begun showing a massive drop in enthusiasm. Numbers which they need to maintain if they'll hope to compete with Donald Trump, who's probably technically the most popular presidential candidate since Richard Nixon. But what do you expect? What do you expect when you take someone as unpopular as Kamala Harris and try to gaslight the country into believing she's a popular candidate. This is why they waited so long to do this, by the way. Why they waited until Super Tuesday or after Super Tuesday, waited all the way until August before replacing Biden on the ticket. If they only waited until, I don't know, October maybe, they would have had a shot. Then come yesterday, a double whammy. Major, major backsliding in the polls with Trump taking the lead nationally, something he has never seen, by the way, in the weeks prior to the election. In both of his previous presidential campaigns, 2016, Trump was trailing Hillary by like eight points nationally and ended up coming back and stopping her in the Electoral College. Then in 2020, something similar. He lagged Biden in the national polls at the time, eight weeks out from November. So then what the hell does this mean, folks? Because right now, seven to eight weeks out from Election Day, Trump isn't behind, but he's leading. And according to multiple polling outlets, leading by a lot. Take a look at this. Daily Mail's election model reveals Trump has surged ahead of Kamala Harris and shows how RFK Jr. dropping out hands key state to Donald. This is from the JL Partners election model that tracks all the polls every day. It says it crunches the latest polls and decades of data to predict the winner. They say this, the latest polls have tilted the Daily Mail's election model in Trump's direction, giving him a decisive lead over Kamala Harris a day before he goes head-to-head -head with his Democratic rival on the debate stage. Listen to this, though. The algorithms show he now has a 55% chance of becoming president. Four and a half point boost since last week. And it gets even better because the one thing Kamala Harris needs, absolutely needs, the state she must win to even have a shot at reaching 270 electoral votes are Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. The magic, brew, the magic blue wall, right? Now, Minnesota's in there too, but she's ahead there. These three states, though, the Dems always win. They rely on them. Well, take a look at this CBS poll. 
that was also released yesterday. Look at this. Michigan tied. Pennsylvania tied. Even Wisconsin, they're virtually tied right in the margin of error. Then JL Partners showing that the crucial battleground of Pennsylvania has now moved clearly into the Trump column, which is huge, folks. It said whoever wins Pennsylvania wins the election. Then one of the Dems' favorite polls, this is just putting a cherry on top, corporate media always hails the New York Times Siena College poll as the most trustworthy. Well, they came out yesterday, giving Trump a one-point lead nationally, suggesting Harris's honeymoon period is coming to an end, they said. And then finally, the moment of truth, right? Probability of winning the Electoral College. Look at this sudden jump in Trump's margin, saying it's gone from a 50% toss-up to a 60% chance of a Trump win, largely because of Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s decision to end his independent run. And there's more bad news for the vice president, they say, in the so-called blue wall. Again, it comes down to RFK Jr. and the impact of his name being removed from ballots in Michigan. Harris's chance of winning that swing state has dropped now from 64% to 52%. Then if you look at the breakdown of the polls, for example, the most important voter issues, right? What are the most important things that voters care about? It comes down to these two, the economy and immigration. The economy, no surprise here, Trump's leading 55 to 42. And immigration, Trump leads by 10, 53 to 43. And this is a major issue in November, folks. Immigration, which corporate media won't tell you about. Instead, they try and steal man Kamala's flip-flop, telling you why it makes sense that she all of a sudden wants to build Trump's border wall. Give me a break. Anyone who's paying attention knows she will not do that, not in a million years. She's fundamentally opposed to it. But it's even worse than that. This is one issue that I believe Kamala may actually have an ideological stance on. Everything else, she's a chameleon about, doing whatever she's told to do. And credit to CNN, by the way, for calling this out. Take a listen to this clip from the other day. An incredible moment of clarity, of journalistic clarity, that Aaron Burnett has over on CNN. Watch this. For the first time on her campaign website, a K-File investigation has uncovered, meantime, a 2019 questionnaire. And in this questionnaire, Harris laid out some much more liberal stances, among them on immigration. So in 2019, in what K-File found, she said she would cut funding to ICE, writing, quote, our immigrant detention system is out of control, and I believe we must end the unfair incarceration of thousands of individuals, families, and children. I was one of the first senators after President Trump was elected to advocate for a decrease in funding to ICE. Well, now, of course, she's touting the Biden administration's executive order to crack down on the border. K-Files' Andrew Kaczynski joins me now. Uh, Andrew, that's pretty um, incredible on its own um, when you're talking about what you found here on ICE. What else did you find? Yeah, and this was a questionnaire that she filled out for the ACL, ACLU, and this questionnaire is really uh, an interesting snapshot in time of that 2019 Democratic primary. Uh, Kamala Harris was trying to get to the left uh, of Bernie Sanders. She was trying to get to the left of Elizabeth Warren, and you really see that in a lot of these answers, and I want to walk our viewers through a little bit of what she said. Let's just take uh, immigration and look at what she said here. She said on immigration, she made this open-ended pledge uh, to end immigrant detention. She said she supported uh, taxpayer-funded gender transition surgeries for detained migrants. She also said she Taxpayer supported... Taxpayer-funded gender transition surgeries for detained migrants. For detained migrants. She actually said she, she supported that. She wrote, both wrote and answered in the affirmative when she was asked this. Oh. And she said she also supported it uh, for federal prisoners. Now, she also pledged to slash immigration detention by 50%, close all family and private facilities, and decrease funding for ICE, and then the end uh, end, end uh, ICE detainers uh, with local law enforcement. I mean, these are these are things that, you know, it would be hard to think that you would come up with taxpayer mm -hmm. funding, gender transitions for uh, for detained migrants. And yet this, as you say, written and and verbally, mm -hmm. uh, you know. And that's the thing, folks. Kamala is all over the place right now, trying to win votes wherever she can. But if she were to win in November, one of the first things they would try to do, in my opinion, is major immigration reform, amnesty for all undocumented immigrants. Again, that's my opinion, but it's an educated opinion. Top Democrats have already changed their public stance on what to do with the 10 plus million 
undocumented migrants that Kamala and Biden let into the country these last three years. Chuck Schumer just came out publicly recently and said so. Take a listen to this. The only way we're going to have a great future in America is if we welcome and embrace immigrants, the dreamers and all of them, because our ultimate goal is to help the dreamers, but get a path to citizenship for all 11 million or however many undocumented there are here. That's the top Democrat in the Senate saying that. There is so much happening with regard to this immigration issue. If you didn't hear about the craziness, by the way, that's been happening in Ohio lately, the 20,000 Haitian migrants who have a small town in Ohio, Springfield, Ohio, up in arms, residents in that town baffled how in the span of two years their city has been turned upside down. For instance, at a town hall two weeks ago, one resident said, quote, Haitian migrants were in the park grabbing ducks and eating them. Another said their neighbor had their cat go missing only to see it hanging from a tree upside down like you do when butchering. And why do you think this problem exists? Why are there all of a sudden 20,000 Haitian migrants in Springfield, Ohio? That is why also, starting with our administration, we gave TPS, temporary protected status, to Haitian migrants, 55,000. And then more recently, we extended temporary protected status to over 100,000 Haitian migrants for that very reason, that they need support, they need protection. So look, the last few days have seen a major groundswell of support for President Trump, but tonight's the kicker. Tonight, Trump needs to come out strong from the get-go. He needs to be disciplined, not take the bait, because you know it's not just Kamala there, right? It's the moderators. It's the questions. All of it will be set up to get some kind of reaction out of him. He has to stay cool and let her speak like he did with Biden. Let her fumble and mumble like she's good at. And come tomorrow, this election could be in the bag.